This is 101 on Plus TV Africa, a program where we pick brains of thought leaders in Africa to identify problems, analyze them, and of course, prefer solutions for various sectors. My name is Elsie Godwin. On this episode, we would be discussing with entrepreneurs as they let us in on how the coronavirus pandemic has affected their method of doing business and business in general. Joining us via Skype is Adenike Ogunlesi. She is a Nigerian fashion entrepreneur, a leading designer, manufacturer, and retailer of children's clothing line. She is a leader and creative director at Gatimo Apparels. Hello, Ma. Thank you for your time. How are you? Fine, thank you. You made a switch from making garments to making a range of face masks from scratch. What informed this decision? Okay, so um, it's not news that there's a pandemic uh, and that the entire global um, supply chain has been obstructed. Um, we are already in this line of business of manufacturing garments um, and we're talking about the availability of protective wear um, that can potentially save lives um, and that has the potential to protect people. And then I'm hearing people talking about, oh, China is, is, uh, is the, uh, the logistics is closed, we can't get it in from China. And I'm thinking, you know, if, if we didn't learn anything from, from this whole experience, we have to learn that it's time to look inward. You know, it's time to build Nigeria. <laughs> it's time to invest in Nigeria. It's time to use what we have to get what we want. Why should we have a facility sitting down here doing nothing and you're thinking of bringing masks from China when there are Nigerians who can be sitting at those machines, stitching those masks for Nigerians with the potential of also sending them out to the rest of the world? So, I mean, it was, it, it was, it, it just seemed a natural and common sense thing to do at the time. Yes, was I afraid? Yes, I was. Why? Because I was thinking of the people. I was thinking of uh, their safety. I was thinking of my safety, my family's safety, their family's safety. So it's like, okay, look, let's have a conversation. Let's bring a few people in. Let's make some samples. And the conversation was, we can do this. Why can't we do it? What does it take? Okay, it's going to cost us in electric, uh, in uh, um, restructuring the, the, the factory. What's it going to cost us? But there's a bigger opportunity here. You know, it, yes, it is a problem. There's a, we're in the middle of a difficulty, but in the middle of that difficulty arose the opportunity to produce masks and we can do it. And so we will do it. Uh, um, and I'm glad for the, the, the inspired thoughts and the courage to, to get up and, and do it, really. Um, because I'm just, I'm tired of looking elsewhere for solutions when we, we can find creative solutions to local problems in Nigeria. You know? In overcoming these challenges, um, what, what are the peculiar ones that you have faced so far or encountered in making this um, needed switch? Basically, it was getting people to work um, and getting them to uh, um, uh, comply with the WHO COVID uh, um, protocols. And then we set a whole new set of protocols um, where we put all the things in place to sanitize the factory, to uh, um, people wash their hands, to we, we, we hired um, bigger buses so we could transport people and still allow for social distancing. Um, and we're transporting them all at a cost. We're feeding the staff because there's nobody who's cooking. And if they're cooking, we don't want them going in and out. Uh, um, so they're with us. We, 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 we're giving them a vitamin C to also boost their in, uh, um, immunity. Um, we're teaching them about social distancing, which is hard, you know, because we're all used to, as soon as we come together, we all cluster. So you have to have supervisors who are constantly shouting social distancing, wear your mask, everybody has to wear a face mask, it's compulsory, there are hand sanitizers all over the place, you have to keep washing your hands, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, a behavioral change that you have to drive with a lot of uh, um, uh, intentionality because you can't leave it to chance because people don't naturally like to change. You know, 
uh, and we don't want any casualties. So we're forcing people to, to comply with those protocols. So was it easy? No, but you know, whatever is, most things are uphill. You just have to learn to climb uphill and get to the top of the hill. So I guess that's what we've, what we've tried to do. A lot of investments to do um, into a rather new line of business. How would you rate the um, return on investment in this line of production um, compared to the structure of business you originally built this for? I'm using the same machines. Um, this is a social responsibility. This is something that needed to be done rather than take the jobs to China. So the, the motive was not profit driven. It's to what, how do you cover the costs? So it, it's, as a new business evolved, yes, probably uh, there's a potential for a whole new business because Gatimo Apparel was set up to contract manufacture for uniforms, now medical wear, uh, um, scrubs, PPE, all of those things. We will now begin to invest in the machines that can do all those and in the people um, to train the people to do that. But if you think about this thing from the social angle, yeah, um, this demand has driven up employment. We are now running a night shift to be able to meet up um, with the demand that people of the orders that people are looking for. So there's cues of people wanting to work. And this for me was a revelation, you know, because everybody believes that young Nigerians don't want to work. Maybe we don't have enough factories for them to find employment to work. Maybe that's one of the problems, you know. Maybe we need to reinvest in our own country, in, in, in toiling and building uh, from scratch, rather than turning to the convenience of bringing everything from China. It's a matter of days from China, but its effects on our society, uh, the socioeconomic impact of always buying everything from China or from Turkey or from this place or from that place has its adverse effects uh, um, on our economy, on the labor force, on the people. So for me, uh, this, this was a huge opportunity to showcase Nigeria, to showcase capability. The story of our business is one of resilience. Uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's a story of possibilities, that anything is possible, so long as you're willing to, to make the, take the leap, you know. Um, this is not a time to be doing a new business. But there's a call, there's a need. We have the equipment, the facility is sitting there. Come on, you have to get up and answer that call. You have to do something. You can't just sit on all you that have, equipment. You have mentioned and China like a couple of times in this conversation. Would you say you draw inspiration from China or you are in competition with China? I cannot be in competition with China because Chinese, uh, um, the, 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 the amount of support that they get from their government um, is second to none. They are very deliberate and intentional about being the entire uh, um, uh, sourcing uh, um, destination for the entire world. You know, um, so I cannot compete with China. No, not now. But you see, no planes are coming in with goods from China right now. So why can't Nigeria become China? Hmm. Why? Why can't we use what we have to get what we want? Why can't we do that? We have to stop turning because something is difficult. It's difficult to manufacture because you get very little support for being a manufacturer. But in Nigeria, there is a, 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 a garment, uh, and hopefully will become an association. There's a group of garment manufacturers uh, that have invested in, in, in machines and machinery to be able to manufacture clothing and whatever in Nigeria. But everybody gets on the plane to China. And so a lot of people, some of them, their machines are lying there. And this is an opportunity to activate all of those factories. Activate them from the 1,000 machine to the 20 machines. We need to activate them. Huh? So I'm not in competition with China. Yes, no, I like that I'm you not. mentioned the support they get from their government. I'm, yeah, I want to build my own country. Yeah. Because look at now, this is where we're all stuck. Did anybody believe you can't get on a plane and go anywhere? Yeah. If you're sick, you'll be treated here. School is here, you know? So we have to face the realities of our own country and begin to say to ourselves, how do we build? 
How do we commit to building Nigeria? And that's always my dream, to employ Nigerians to do the jobs uh, 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 instead of taking the jobs elsewhere. All right, very quickly before I let you go, I like that you mentioned the support entrepreneurs or business owners in China are getting from their government. So as a business owner, which, um, I mean, that makes you an employer of labor, what sort of support would you expect from the government during this trying period of um, COVID-19? Um, debt relief, um, lower interest rates, uh, tax breaks, um, <laughs> So, so many things like that. Uh, um, some kind of financial support, which we know Nigeria apparently is broke because the oil is, is, uh, is as good as gone. Again, uh, you know, it, we have to change our mindset. We really must change our mindset from traveling the easy road to building, tilling the soil and actually building our own, our own country. Um, for me, it's, it's never been a better time to promote Made in Nigeria, um, to show what Nigeria is capable of doing, to show the potential uh, um, of what Nigeria is, is capable of doing. And so the government should support us as best as they can, you know, as best as they can, with policy that supports us, uh, with so policy that, that, that supports the growth of local industry, with interest rates that support the growth of local industries. Uh, all right, thank you That's so brief. much for your time. We love what you're doing right now with creating the face marks that we all need. And we hope that very soon we can have you at our studios to have further conversations on making Made in Nigeria products more exportable. And before I go, um, really, honestly, anybody out there listening, um, a crisis is a time of change. And whether you like it or not, there's never going to be a normal that we used to know. It's going to be a new normal. So you have a unique choice to sit and think, how will I come out of this? How can I retool myself that I can come out of this and be useful in the new dispensation or in the new normal? Uh, because if you cannot do that, you're going to become obsolete. How do you use technology for businesses? How do you train your people? How do you support your people to grow? How do you build your strategy and how do you drive its execution so that it gives you the results that you're looking for? You're not alone. Uh, um, a lot of us are in the same boat. But you know one thing, every day do 10 things. The next day it becomes 12. The third day it becomes 15 till you get to 100. Just small incremental shifts every day will bring about the change that you need. And I wish you all the best of luck. Thank, Thank you, you for your time, ma. Thank you. Bye. All right, we'll go on a quick break now, but when we return, another intelligent mind from South Africa joins us for conversation.